Let's pray. Heavenly Father, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock, my strength, my redeemer. Amen. So for those who are just joining us today, we are in a series on the Psalms. We've covered Psalm 1, which is about the wisdom of God. And then we covered Psalm 2, which is about the sovereign rule of God and the rule of the Messiah. Now, those two were pretty robust in God's sovereign nature and following Him and about His righteousness. So I thought it'd be nice to shift gears a little bit and do one on comfort. So we are going to do the 23rd Psalm today. The Lord is my shepherd. Now as a side note, for some of you who have been here for a while, uh, I actually did this message about 20 months ago, but the conditions were a little bit different. I had COVID. I was pretty darn sick. And so I gave the message in my living room to a video camera, something I never want to do again. So I thought, since it's been 20 months and we have a lot of people who have never have been here since that time, it'd be good to revisit this psalm, a psalm of comfort. So our roadmap today is about the shepherd. It's the shepherd's provision, protection, and blessing. And let's begin with this first phrase of the first verse the Lord is my shepherd. You know, there are some psalms, or, or let's put it this way. There are some things in your life that are just so comfortable that after a while, you just kind of put them on and don't really think about it anymore. A favorite jacket, maybe, or some outfit or shoes, you just slip on. You don't even think about it, right? It just is comfortable. And it's kind of this way with the 23rd Psalm in many respects, it's just so comfortable that we don't really pause to think about it anymore. But I want you to notice it starts off this way. The Lord is my shepherd. This is about the Lord first and foremost, and it's about the sheep second. It is about the Lord. So it's, it's when, you, when you have the proper order, the Lord first, the sheep second, Life goes so much better when you have it in that order. Because a lot of people want to make this about the sheep first and then the Lord second. And if that were so, it'd be more like, I am the favored sheep and the Lord takes care of me. But that's not the way it is. It's the Lord first. It's the Lord who leads us on. It is the Lord who takes care of us, who comforts us, who protects us. And sheep, well, sheep really need a lot of stuff. They need guidance. They need protection. They need everything that comes from the shepherd. You see, just by this little phrase, the Lord is my shepherd, it really starts talking about everything flows from him first and foremost, his power, his care, his mercy. So we kind of understand that, right? But this phrase, the Lord is my shepherd, I'm going to guess is kind of abstract for you. Did anybody actually grow up on a farm? Anybody? Couple, couple people. Anybody on a sheep farm? What? Yay! <laughs> I don't know if I should say yay, but, you know, but for, for, for most people, this, the, the, being a shepherd is just very abstract. We don't know much about it. But for David... For David, this was something very real. If you recall, he grew up in Bethlehem, which is where Jesus came from. And he was a shepherd. David was a shepherd. He worked out in the pastures. So he knew firsthand what this meant. It wasn't some abstract thing. In fact, when he was uh, consecrated before the Lord from 2 Samuel at chapter 5, it says, You shall be shepherd of my people Israel, and you shall be prince over Israel. You see, to be a shepherd for David 
the shepherd king really meant something. That he was to truly care for his people and rule over his people as well. It was both. That nothing was outside of his control or his care. That was the responsibility that he was given by God himself. And God himself is the ultimate shepherd. There is no other shepherd higher than him. And he takes care of us and rules over us. That's why we had the reading from Ezekiel today. Let's go over part of it, okay? Starting with verse 14 through 16. I will feed them with a good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be their shepherd of, the, of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak and the fat and the strong I will destroy, and I will feed them in justice. Notice, it is what the Lord will do on all of this. I will do this. I will do this. I will feed my sheep. I will protect them. I will protect them from those who are trying to destroy them. This is what the shepherd does. And the, and the sheep here are pretty passive. It's the shepherd who acts, and thus it is the sheep who are dependent wholly on the shepherd. Wholly. You see, we get to this next part of that phrase, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This I shall not want could be paraphrased this way, I have all that I need, therefore I am not in want. That even my desires are, are what the Lord desires. For when you have what the Lord desires, you are not in want. You know, there's a, a fellow, Robert Ketchum, he wrote a book, I Shall Not Want. He tells a story about a Sunday school teacher, and uh, the Sunday school teacher was teaching on the 23rd Psalm, and she asked her class, okay, who can recite it by heart? And this little four-and-a-half-year-old girl raised her hand, I can, I can. And the teacher was like, okay. So the little girl comes up. She bows. She says, the Lord is my shepherd. That's all I want. And bows again. But you know, that's, that's the essence of it, isn't it? On a child level, he's all that I want. And my heart's desire is his desire. And here's the secret. When our desire is his desire, we shall not want. We have everything that we need. So this is the Lord. This is the shepherd. And he provides for us provision. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, this first phrase, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Sometimes the shepherd has to make the sheep stop and relax a little bit. I had an opportunity to go to Pine Top. On, uh, I was there all Friday and most of Saturday. And Pine Top, by the way, is uh, just south of Sholo. It's about three hours from here. And it reminds me of Minnesota. There's pine, there's, there's trees. <laughs> There's pine trees and oak trees and all of that, cooler weather. And I know for some people it would be too cool right now, but it was nice. And uh, I took like a five-mile walk one day. I took another five-mile walk the other day. And you know what I got to do? In the morning, I got to have my cup of coffee, sit outside on the porch, and read Scripture. And... I often don't get that relaxing part. Even as a shepherd, right, of, of the flock here, I often don't get that because there's a lot of stuff to do. But it was nice to sit, be with his word, not have to prepare a sermon, right? Not to have to study it for 
making sure other people know, but just for me. And it was a moment of restoration. And it was nice. And I think I should do that every weekend. (laughs) Right? That's what he's talking about here. See, when we follow our shepherd, when we abide in his word, when we stop, when he makes us just stop, hear my word, take it in. There's a renewal. Look, all of us know that life is busy. Most of us grew up with that phrase, the rat race, right? We grew up with that. And most of us in this generation grew up with the work ethic of work, 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 work. And that's what we do. And that's what I inherited as well. And there's a certain amount of stress, and oftentimes there's a distress that comes with it when there's no respite. And then there's also just the the hard hardships of life. I mean, our prayer list is pretty long, right? About all the people, and there's even more that we could pray for who are in need. And sometimes that just beats you down, and there's no rest. David, when he wrote this, I mean, there wasn't a lot of rest in his life. Some of the Psalms he wrote while he was actually being pursued by Saul. So he was in the mountainous areas of Israel. And then, certainly after he had his adulterous affair with Bathsheba, even his children turned against him. I mean, there was a lot of issues in his life, a lot of heartache. But in the midst of this, the Lord is my shepherd, and he makes me lie down in green pastures. You see, these green pastures really talk about the idea of nourishment and abundance and the still waters, rest and security. Be nourished in that abundance, in that security, in that rest does restore you. Look, Jesus in his ministry, I'm sure, got physically worn out. And all of the people clamoring to see him, to be healed. And yet he spent a lot of time with the Father by himself, being restored in the Lord. And so we too must be restored. And yet there is more to this. It says this, He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So one of the provisions is path of righteousness. But it's not for our glory. It's for his glory, for his name's sake. And when we walk in his paths, his righteousness, there's provision, there is blessing. You see, how do you know, though? How do you know that you're walking in his paths of righteousness? That's a question, right? And we actually covered that quite a bit in that whole series, Life in the Spirit. Are you following him and his word versus the world? And it's actually pretty simple that way. When you are following him and his word, you are walking in the paths of his righteousness. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will come and prod you a little bit, say, get back on that path, right? And when we are on that path, there's a provision, there's also a blessing. But you can't expect to receive his provision or his blessing if you reject his righteousness. So as a sheep, we are guided, we are provided for. As a loved son and daughter in Christ Jesus. He cares for us and he protects us. Let's go on here. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now walking through the valley of shadow of death was something that was very real for David because he really was being pursued by others. They really did want to kill him. And so there's a lot of psalms where he cries out to the Lord. But what did he do? Did he just 
hide? Did he cower in fear? Did he simply ignore his circumstances? The answer is no to all of that. He didn't even try to pull, him up, pull himself up by his own bootstraps. What he did was trust in the Lord. And you have to understand this trust was personal. You see, it's really easy to go to church, to think about the Lord out there, you know, God over us. And sometimes it's harder to think of God with us, especially we're in that valley of the shadow of death. But he is with us. See, you find in this language beforehand, it is he, the Lord, he, but now it shifts to you. For you are with me, your rod, your staff, they comfort me. So there's a personal aspect now that happens in this particular song, psalm. And we find that the Lord is not transcendent, which just means overall. And indeed, He is overall, but He is with us. Even, you know, Advent is not that far away. And we talk about Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God with us. He is with us. And He's promised not to leave us. Even when we are in the valley of the shadow of death. So for communion, we're going to have the song on eagle's wings. And I think it's also very appropriate. It says, You need not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Though thousands fall about you, near you it shall not come. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, and make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. You can hear the peace and comfort in that, can't you? This is the peace and comfort that comes even in the hardships of life. Even in the heartache. We fear not. Because Jesus is with us. Emmanuel, God with us in the flesh. But you know what? He's more than just our friend during that time. He's our protector as well. It says, your rod and staff, they comfort me. So a rod is a, a shorter, heavier stick used to ward off the enemies. And the staff, in the picture there, you often see the staff, right? And what's the staff used for? To guide the sheep, right? To keep you back on the paths of righteousness. And because it's on the paths of righteousness, that you, when you're on that, you fear no evil. You are with him. So he is there to protect us. You see, the, uh, let's see if I've got, oh, that's what I just explained. So there you go. Little reiteration there. You see, no matter the circumstances you are in, you have eternal security in Christ Jesus because of who he is. And that should give you the peace and comfort no matter the turbulence of the time. But you have to remember now, sometimes he makes you lie down in green pasture to remind you that he is there with you. And then you have the blessing. So the blessing is, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's two blessings I really want to talk about here. The first is anointing, and the second is mercy. Anointing. Anointing in the Old Testament, you know, pouring oil over the head, signifies the holiness or separation unto God. It is fundamentally an act of God, and the word anointed means the bestowal of divine favor. So David said he was anointed by God. So the question is, how are you and I anointed by God? Well, let's connect some of the dots here. So we talked about last week, Jesus 
is the Messiah. And Messiah means the anointed one. And in the Greek, it means Christ. So Jesus is the anointed one, the Christ. And God has separated him out for divine work. And what was that work? It was a singular work. It was to go to the cross, to shed his blood, a perfect sacrifice for all of our sin. And in Christ Jesus, you and I are then anointed by his blood. We are anointed by his blood, by the blood of the Lamb. Do you remember in the Passover, they put the blood's lamb uh, on the doorway so that death would pass over? In Christ Jesus, you are now covered by his blood. You are passing through death to eternal life and life everlasting. So we have that anointing. And that death has no sting for us. There's the joy that comes in Christ Jesus and His protection, His anointing, His blessing. And if you think about that, how great is the blessing of Christ Jesus? It overflows us. When you actually stop and think about the blessing that is in Him, Surely our cup overflows. And then now we go to this next blessing. The surely. It says surely goodness and mercy. And by the way, I want to learn how to sing that song a little bit better because the surely goodness and mercy. Did anybody else have? Maybe it was just me. Had a little trouble with that one. Okay. All right. But surely. Surely means it is assured. Not a hope. Not a maybe. Not I wish but assured. And what are you assured? That mercy and that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. How can David be assured of that? It is not because of how good he was. And by the way, next week we're going to do Psalm 51 where he prays for forgiveness for his adulterous affair. It wasn't because how good David is or how good we are. It is because it rests in God and His mercy. See, this word for mercy we've covered before, it's this word hesed, which is much more than just mercy. It's loving kindness, compassion. It is a steadfast love. It expresses an essential part of God's character. So we have the assurance of His compassion, His love, His grace, His mercy forever. And we have that assurance, that blessing, because it is given to us in Christ Jesus. Not that we've earned it, but we have received the anointing of Christ Jesus through faith in Him and have that promise of eternal life with Him. This is the blessing So there are some times where we just have to stop, smell the roses, so to speak, stop being with the Lord, and understand who Jesus is and the grace that he has poured out on each and every one of us. When you pause in that regard, your cup overflows. So this week, think about this. Meditate. We've talked about this word, meditate, to ponder, to think through. Jesus is my Lord and shepherd. What does that really mean? Right? We've talked about that. But he is your Lord and your shepherd. And meditate on this. How is he providing for you? How is he protecting you? How has he blessed you? And how is he blessing you? Let's pray. Holy God and gracious God, 
thank you for leading us on. Thank you for giving us our shepherd, Christ Jesus. Help us to pause this week and be filled to overflowing in his love and his grace and his mercy. And we thank you, gracious God, in Jesus' name, amen.